Honourable Margaret. Um, I suppose uh, I too welcomed the overall trust of the budget 2019. Um, I'm aware of the government claim of having the first balanced budget in 10 years, and that is fine, and, and, and I support this f fiscal policy. But it's how the spend is distributed which will always create conflicting views in this chamber. Uh, firstly, Minister, as I am spokesman on sport for my party, Fianna Fáil, um, I welcome the increased allocation that has been given to Minister Brendan Griffin, the Department. Uh, this has to be welcomed and is now acknowledged that participation in sport and recreation activities can play a vital part in one's well-being. Um, in the summer, just past the government launched its National Sports Policy 2018-2027. And given success of many of our sports and athletes in the, in the past number of months on the national scene, uh, I suppose I better exclude um, what happened last weekend, you know, um, but this country is able to punch above its weight, like, you know, in competing with the, some of the best athletes in the world. And, the success of this sports policy document, of course, is dependent on funding. <laughs> and from what I've seen already today in, in press releases from sports NGBs and including the Olympic Federation of Ireland, this budget 2019 allocation is on the, the right track. We must also be delighted um, that veteran sports activities is, is maintained at the current rate. I suppose as I move on um, and leave my brief sport, uh, I might have come to a few criticism, but um, I noticed in the Minister's um, who's, um, speech deliberation, like, you know, um, agriculture seems to be going down the government's pecking order in priority and importance to this, this country. Um, you know, it, it was ironic following the election of the previous government and following 2020 <coughs> election, like, you know, the trust and the importance that was given to agriculture in, 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 in getting this economy back up and running again through the implementation of the Harvest 2020 and our other initiatives for the production of agricultural products of this country. But in, in the Minister's document, like, you know, agriculture seems to be consumed up in climate change and rural development programs in, in regards to initiatives. And before I continue agriculture, like, you know, and, and I heard some ministers speak earlier like, about the rural development funding that like, and I welcome the increase. But listen, I asked my colleagues across the way, when I see a, an article um, in our local paper at home, the, the farm exam, that Minister Ring is perplexed by leader spending. And wh wh what he was uh, hitting at there was that too much money is wasted in administration of uh, the delivery of, um, for the want of a better word, leader funding. And, you know, you must not forget that one of your previous ministers, Minister Phil Hogan, is the man that destroyed the functioning and operational procedures of some of the very best leader companies and, and, and um, companies in, in, in throughout the country. I know he mentioned that there were some places where leader funding would have been properly utilised, but I can assure you, uh, deputies across the ministers, um, that uh, in previous leader programmes, that any money that was spent down my way be by Blackwater, um, ECAD and East Cock and, and, and Ballyhoe Development, you know, it was well distributed you know, and at the minimum of cost and administration uh, usage. And I, I think that you should review that area. Like, you know, I know that Minister um, Ring has now this portfolio in this, like, you know, but he, he has to, like, even as late as the like, I was approaching like, you know, about um, how to adjust funding, to come down to this funding, funding for a, a various projects. And the complications and the red tape has only got worse, not better. We actually created an extra tier in trying to distribute the money that you and the government provide down to these local development companies. And I think that should be reviewed. I, I, I'm not a big fan of these LCDCs and that, like, you know, um, it's just another tier of bureaucracy in the whole operation of the distributor of money into rural Ireland. And you mentioned climate change and, and, and you know, I know the government has been attacked that they didn't do enough in this budget, and as far as maybe it's correct in saying that, you know, that there's, it didn't get enough of mention in, in the, the minister's uh, document, and we're supposed to be better start and we'll, we'll be playing a catch up game again with the rest of the European countries. But at the same time, like, you know, we wouldn't want to be said by our former president of this country like, who tells us that maybe we should consider eating less meat. Um, I was a bit taken aback, like, you know. Everybody's entitled to their own uh, eating habits, and that they go, but um, there's been many 
scientific research done showing that meat is, is, is good for you as opposed to bad for you like in, in an overall context. And being a country, as I said in my previous deliberation, like you're dependent on agriculture, that we must drive on the agriculture economy in this part of, of the world. Um, Listen, the Minister of Agriculture and also some good uh, funding throughout the year, but uh, you know, trying to get money out of the Minister of Agriculture is like um, trying to pull one's tooth out with a string. Um, we acknowledge that there's problems like, you know, and we need uh, issues to address problems like, you know, and I welcome his stats on the, in regards to the beef industry, you know, which is similar to the, the suck the premium request, like, you know, but we want to for 200 euro a head. And I'll be getting about averaging about 40 euro when you break it down. Yeah. And when you compare the minister gave 25 euro uh, last year for each EU, EU, like you know, and then pay work involved again, like you know, but um, agriculture you know, will always play an important part in this economy, in, in this part of the world, and, and we must not lose sight of that. I have to touch on, on housing for a while, and um, as you know, I mentioned my previous speaker, like, you know, and we, we take nothing from to various parts of the house, and we have Fianna Fáil standing housing, but Fianna Fáil has been good to deliver housing, be it private or social prospects. And <laughs> this, this through the, an input from our, our, our own party spokesman, Dan O'Brien, and, and, and Mike McGrath and Barry Cowan, I welcome the increased funding of the affordable housing initiative. And I would ask you know, that a big push be put in the, other, in the, the several sites initiative, like, you know. Um, Several sites is a big problem in many of our towns and villages, like you know, because that's what creates a problem in regards to people trying to access housing for themselves. And we need to roll out that money as quick as possible. I know it, it, everybody says this is all for double, like, you know, but we must not forget there is housing prices in some of our, our, our towns and, and, and villages throughout this country. Um, I'm not going to try to defend the landlords, but we must not forget that if we didn't have landlords, I'm not talking about the big um, vulture funds who own massive uh, complexes, I'm talking about the individual landlords. We must not lose sight of the, the important role they have played in the last 10 years. Many of these carry a major burden on their shoulders in debt and we're charging little rent and, and maybe we should kick things through the rent cap you know, but um, they did play an important role. If we didn't have them, we'd have a worse, a worse housing crisis. We'd have more people on, on the, the size of the road. Like, you know, and, and we acknowledge the role they do. Like, you know, but at the same time, we must give back the, the, the role to the, the local authorities. In, in their old functions and all the functions that they were with the best people, local authorities about housing, um, social housing applicants and, and other examples of that. But we need minister, and I said to you already in the past few days, you know, that um, get over the red tape and fund the arrangements. And I give you the example, Minister, maybe you, you repeat me probably hopefully the housing finance uh, agency, like, you know, for them to give approval for funding. I had a case in Cork, um, a colleague, a former colleague of mine in the county council was telling me, Alan Corbyn, you know, that um, Clued, Paperwork are completed, but the housing finance agency only re meets every so often. They need at least three weeks' notice of intent to draw down money, and uh, with that, you can miss a, de a deadline and you could end up waiting six or, six or eight weeks before this money can be touched. And like every week counts at the moment in regards to get a house built. All right, thank you, Deputy. Um, finally, um, I, 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 I just want to say that. Um, the transport minister, you know, I, I, I said the transport committee, I, 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 um, he's missing right, but, you know, like, we, I welcome the increased funding, like, you know, but a lot of the announcements I've seen in my area, don't kettle interchange, you know, and, and planning just being given to go ahead with the M20 Cock to Limerick, um, or PW, need to be more for coming with our money, like the, the, the way in for my, listen, Overall, I suppose I have to welcome the budget, you know, there is concerns and I could go on for another while and um, just say that you know, this. Thank you very much. Thank